With transitions, it's really transition, transitions between some ways you can do transitions. So we're doing the old answering your questions, any question answered video. Thanks so much to everybody who sent questions in. I'm gonna do my best to get through them all and hopefully some interesting stuff will come up. Do you have a collection of extra modules that you hold on to but aren't in case for one reason or other? If so, why? Yeah, I do actually have loads of other modules. I've actually got a bigger case to this one. I don't think I've ever actually sold a module to my shame. I just can never bring myself to do it. I think I'm gonna do a all my modules video coming up very shortly and explain why some of them are not in this case and are in the other case. There's definitely some favorites in there and there's also some ones where there's a very good reason why they're not in this case, which sort of thing I take around with me and use all the time to write most of my music on. Are you not disappointed with the Kemi's Tyco? Um, I sort of have a real love-hate thing with it. It's a little bit big, but it sounds amazing. I would imagine the reason you might hate it and why most people might hate it is because it can be incredibly annoying. The main reason for that is because if you want it to track Volt per octave and follow a sequence, quite often if the trigger and the sequence are received at exactly the same time, it'll miss the sequence and you'll end up basically playing an inconsistent se sequence. One little tip for this is to put a very slight delay on whatever's triggering the module. So for instance, you could send the gate output through something like maths to just create a tiny delay. And that way it will always receive the trigger delay after it receives the CV you want it to receive. I wish that was built into the module because it's a real game changer and you don't really want to be having to use other modules, especially when you've got a limited amount of space just to create a delay to, to make a Kemi's Taiko work the way you want it to work. But hey, what can you do? What is your general approach to building patch? I don't really have like a certain way I go about layering things up or an order that I do things. Sometimes I'll have an idea for like a pad noise or a lead line and then, you know, I've got something that's sort of the heart of a beat. I'll build everything else around it or sometimes I'll just start off with like a, you know, a kick drum and start fitting other sounds around that. I think the main thing I would suggest to people getting into modular is like, very good to have a clear idea of the sound that you want to be making and the sound you're trying to build. Learn that sound, otherwise you can just get lost in like endless sonic exploration, which can be very fun, but also can be not very productive if you're sort of if you're someone who wants to be like finishing music or performing live in a certain way. With your current experience, would you choose the same modules to rebuild your system, or which modules would you replace? Uh, I'd keep them all. No, <laughs> I'm joking. Um, I mean, my system's constantly changing. You know, every now and then I'll buy something, you know, there's been a few recent additions with the foot pedal, which is a real game changer. I put in the boot clot oscillator because that's something I've sort of dreamed about owning. What am I ever enjoying the least or what am I getting the least use out of that needs to come out so that the new exciting thing or old module I suddenly want to include, um, there's room for that. The main thing I've learned from my experience is like, it's just about having the modules that you're gonna have the most fun with and that you're the most excited about using because otherwise you're just gonna end up not using the system. I just bought a squid sample, ES9 and Pamela's new workout. Show us how you connect everything. I've already made a video on this. I'll link it down below. What I would suggest very quickly for you is that you get a Max for Live device that allows you to send a clock from Ableton into Pamela's new workout via the ES9 and that you have your Ableton set up with just a load of inputs ready to go and the Launch Control XL is just sort of faders and mutes on that Ableton setup and that way you can just sort of plug the modular in and you should be ready to go straight away. What is most important to you? The experience of creating or the end product that people listen to? Ooh, I am somebody who sort of tries to use modular to make full tracks and to make bits of music that I could one day release. Definitely when I first got into modular, I spent a lot of time just like noodling and like what's the best way to combine two sine waves to make something rad, but really trying to use a modular in place of a DAW to finish music. Equally, as I said earlier, it's about having fun. Uh, the reason I'm not using a DAW is because it just stopped being fun for me. And if you're not enjoying making music, what's the point? What's the best approach for building tracks on a BeatStep Pro for live use? I mean, I can't possibly tell you what the best approach is, but I can tell you the way that I do it. What I like to do is use the BeatStep Pro to sequence the modular, and I basically fill up the BeatStep Pro, every gate and CV output, every sequence run that it can create, uh, with things that sort of fit together, but when you play them all at the same time, it's 
way too much and it's totally overwhelming. And then I basically use the mutes on the Launch Control XL to bring in different parts and sort of build sections throughout a performance. The difficult part of this and the bit that everybody constantly goes on about in the modular world is like transitions and you know really that's sort of the the most difficult thing in modular there's a few ways that i build transitions between these sections i might do a whole transition video but here's a really quick run through of some ways you can do transitions with transitions it's really thinking like okay in four bars time i'm going to bring something in if i just bring that thing in immediately without sort of warning the audience something's coming it's not going to have the impact you want when that thing arrives. So here's some of the ways I like to sort of create a bit of tension and let people know that a transition is coming. Number one, use something like a big reverb. Fracture is really great because it's got this reverb which increases the size of the reverb and the wetness. So what you can do is just like you say, drop out your kick drum, slowly bring this up until the like this massive reverb is basically washing out the whole track and then cut that back to zero and drop in your kick drum at the same time kick drum and lead drum at the same time and boom you've created like a moment that people listening to are really gonna sort of be excited for when it arrives another thing you can do which i also ran through in my recent foot pedal video is create macros across the modular where for instance you'll turn a knob or press down on a foot pedal and that will mean lots of things across the modular start to change so maybe they all go up in pitch or the attacks become a bit weird so everything sounds like it's reversing and then turn that off drop in a load of new elements everybody's happy the third way you can do this is just use like DJ effect either just sort of on your mixer or on like a master channel on Ableton you know there's no reason you can't sign a low pass filter onto your master channel on Ableton slowly increase that everything's you know loses its bottom end and then just like drop in a load of new elements drop out a load of other ones you've created a great transition the other way and there's also if you check out my sampling video a cool thing to do is like sample your whole beat mute everything except the reversed samples version Listen, have people just hear like everything reversed for a few beats and then mute the sampled version and bring everything else back in or the next section back in so you get this sort of like reversing crazy effect leading into like boom here's the new thing the transitions are really the difficult bit and the bit that i think um, need most uh, thought especially when you're playing live 